Let me guess, you want to change the transmission fluid yourself on your Can-Am UTV. Well, good news, brother. BRP made it really easy on us by hooking us up with a little plastic fill plug and a drain plug and even a hole in the skid plate there to drain the oil. So just sit back, relax, and let's talk about it. I'd like to welcome you if you're new to the channel. I'm Danny with Escape Power Sports, and today we're going to be expanding on our maintenance and upgrade how-to video series for your Can-Am UTV. And in this video, we'll be showing the step-by-step -step procedure on how to replace the transmission fluid in your Can-Am UTV. Now I'm expecting this to be a pretty quick and easy two beer job, so let's get started. So BRP suggests we replace the training oil every 200 hours in normal trail conditions or every 100 hours in severe conditions, such as muddy or dusty environments. But it really don't hurt to do it more often, seeing as we get full access to the gearbox's fill and drain plugs every time we change our engine oil. And feel free to pause the video here to see the tools, parts, and beers required to get this job done. And as far as I know, every Commander and most non-X3 Mavericks all call for the same 450 milliliters of 75W140 synthetic gear oil for the transmission. And I chose to go with the recommended $45 bottle of XPS from the dealer, but I'll leave some links in the description for some more affordable and popular full synthetic options that meet BRP's requirements for these gearboxes. But let's get this easy job started by removing a few interior pieces to get access to our transmission's fill and drain plug. Starting with that passenger seat. That was easy. Then we can remove this passenger side panel with all these pop rivets going around it the same way we would for an oil change. With those pop rivets removed it should just slide right out. Next we can remove this plastic piece under the passenger seat with these four pop rivets in the back, these two on the side, and the three holding it to the floor. With all nine pop rivets out, you can just pull this piece right out. Now we have full access to locate the gearbox's fill and drain plug. You should be able to spot them down there just behind and below the engine oil's dipstick. You might also notice a small hole in the skid plate just below the drain plug. And I found it helped to spray this area off with some parts cleaner and wipe it off with a rag to make spotting that 15 millimeter plastic fill plug and 13 millimeter drain plug easier. Now that we have access and got them located, I like to grab a 15 millimeter wrench and remove the fill plug first. And removing the fill plug first not only lets the oil drain more smoothly and thoroughly, but it ensures that we can get fresh fluid back in there before we drain out all our fluid and realize the fill plug was stripped or something terrible like that. Then I just threw a drain bucket under the hole in the skid plate and grabbed a 13 millimeter socket to remove the drain plug. BRP also mentions this would be a good time to clean the vehicle speed sensor, but that can be a somewhat technical job that I believe involves removing the 4x4 actuator and is outside of the scope of this particular video. But if you subscribe and keep coming back, I'm sure that procedure and all the other random little components of a complete 100 hour service will end up in this Commander Maintenance Series. And it might take 20 even 30 minutes to completely stop dripping. So it looks like our drain plug is actually a small magnet that collects any loose metal or debris in the transmission case. So it probably don't hurt to clean it up a little bit, including cleaning up its little copper o-ring before we reinstall. And once we've got it all cleaned up, we can reinstall our drain plug, making sure not to forget its little copper washer with our 13 millimeter socket. So I believe this drain plug for the gearbox only needs around 15 foot pounds of torque. So I made sure to stop once I got it nice and snug to avoid over tightening and stripping the threads. So now that it's time to go put our fresh fluid back in the transmission, what you'll notice is there's no real easy way to get any kind of funnel or the bottle itself down to the fill hole. So what I figure we'll do instead is I found this old siphon uh, with this clear tubing and it seems to fit on the nozzle half decent. And what I figure we'll do is just cut off a little section of this. And now we got some kind of flexible nozzle way to pour uh, our fluid into the transmission. That ought to work pretty good. So then I just slid this flexible tubing into the fill hole and began adding our 450 milliliters of 75W140 synthetic gear oil. And again, any full synthetic 75W140 API GL5 gear oil will meet the requirements for this gearbox. I'll be sure to leave those links in the description for an affordable Mobile One synthetic if the $45 bottle of the recommended XPS seems just a little too outrageous. And a cool feature of these transmissions is it's a fill it till it spills setup. So once we have our 450 milliliters added, you should see oil spilling out of the fill hole. With our tranny filled up to the brim with fresh lube, we can grab our 15 millimeter wrench and reinstall the fill plug. And I believe this plastic fill plug only takes around 3.7 foot pounds of torque. So I'll finish snugging it up with just one finger so I don't break it. Shit, all that's left to do now is throw our interior back in, starting with the plastic under the passenger seat, that passenger side panel, and the passenger seat itself. 
So I really hope you found this transmission fluid change video helpful. And if you did, do me a quick favor and give the video a thumbs up so I'll know I'm on the right track here. And as you can see, I ended up having to crack a third beer to get this job done. So that's beer number 97, 8, and 99 on our way to the Escape Power Sports 1000 Beer Challenge. So go ahead and subscribe if you don't want to miss the rest of the maintenance videos coming out in this Commander series. Should be pretty comprehensive, covering everything from oil changes to front and rear diff, grease, pretty much any basic maintenance we can save a little money by doing ourselves, you can expect it over the course of these 1,000 beers. I'd like to welcome you if you're new to the channel. I'm Danny with Escape Power Sports. I really want to thank y'all for watching. And as always, we'll see y'all on the trails. And as you can see, I ended up, whoa! So I really hope you found this transmission fluid change video <laughs> helpful. And if you did, do me a quick favor and give the video a thumbs up so I'll know we're on the right track here. Get off me, boy.